Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Zach and I like to make things for Ableton Live. Uh, today we're going to take a little detour. We've been on a Max for Live bus for several videos now and I had the idea today that, well, wouldn't it be fun to make a video showing how to build something useful out of standard Ableton devices? And the device I'm talking about is a delay, a delay effect. And there's a bunch of different delays out there that have different flavors and characters and things. And all those flavors and characters are built into that effect. Uh, well, wouldn't it be neat if we could just build a rack with controls that we expect for delays, but then let us use our own plugins and devices to flavor that delay. And so that's a, a really fun sort of a, a rack to have around and, and to have in your toolbox to be able to craft whatever sort of delay that you want to craft for that situation that you're in. Uh, so let's get started at building that. So what we're going to do is start with an audio effect rack and turn on the chains and create a chain. This first chain, we're going to rename it uh, to dry. And so this is a dry control. So let's, uh, let's just review real quick. What are, the, what are the primary controls that we want to build for our delay effect? So we want a dry volume control. Uh, we want a wet volume control. Uh, we want an effect send control. So, um, you know, maybe just to kind of blip in some sound into the delay line to have it be kind of bouncing around in there is a, you know, maybe a cool dub effect. And then we need a feedback control. Uh, how much of that delayed signal is returned to the input uh, for reprocessing through the whole chain. And so those are the basic components that we need to build here for, for a delay effect. So let's get started. So uh, we've got our dry chain and we're going to map its volume to uh, macro one in our audio effect rack. So we're going to build up this rack that you can use over and over and over again in different contexts and building up in different ways with different flavors. So uh, that dry volume, let's rename this parameter to dry volume. And then we're going to create another chain called uh, effect or effects. And let's map its volume to macro two. And this is going to be the wet volume. In the effects chain, uh, we need to put a delay, so a time delay. So anytime you're doing feedback, you need a time delay. Otherwise, things kind of go cuckoo. And so uh, let's just find the delay device, the standard one that comes with all uh, flavors of Ableton Live. And what we're going to do is uh, turn off all of its flavor. And so we're going to turn off its filter and we're going to make it 100% wet and we're going to turn its feedback to zero because we are going to create the feedback loop. We're going to be handling that. And so right now we're doing a three, three sixteenths delay. So let's listen to that. Just a single delay because we haven't implemented a feedback yet. Okay, so coming after the delay, well, we want some way to return it back to the beginning. And one thing that you might think to reach to is, well, you know, maybe you've seen like in the compressor, it has uh, this uh, sidechain capability. And uh, if you turn on the little headphones, you can then kind of use this to monitor audio from a different channel, or in this case, the same channel. So we could try to do that here. And so if we pick this channel called Whirly, and in terms of the chains we have to tap into, we have the kind of overall chains up here. And then we have the dry chain, pre post effects and then post mixer. And then, but only we have pre effects for the chain that we're in. And I think this was a very deliberate decision on Ableton's part, because for most situations, if you tapped into the post effects at this point, you would create a real nasty feedback loop. And so, you know, rather than to bother people with blown eardrums and blown speakers, I think they just made it difficult to do feedback, but it's still possible. And that's what we're going to do here. So we can't use a compressor here to teleport audio from the end of the chain, but what can we do? Well, we can create a new chain and we're going to call this uh, magic uh, teleporter. And in here we can put a compressor or really usually when I'm doing this, I use a gate actually. So let's just use gate. I think it might take less CPU than a compressor. I don't know. So let's open up the sidechain settings audio from Whirly, uh, which chain will we want the effects chain post effects. 
and uh, turn on the little headphones. And now if we play a note, we get an echo, but it's louder because we're hearing two of them at the same time. One important thing about the Magic Teleporter is we need to mute this chain because we don't want to actually hear it. We're just using its teleportation capabilities. Okay, so then back up here, what we can do is use the same gate, uh, expand the sidechain audio from Whirly from the Magic Teleporter post effect. So now we've created a feedback loop uh, and turn on the headphones. And now let's see what we hear. It's only the dry signal. Um, and that's because uh, we're, you know, ignoring the input to this gate. We're just only using the teleported signal. Nothing's feeding into the delay to then be picked up by the teleported signal and come back. So we need to create a parallel path at this point to allow the first dry signal to come in and also to have the parallel looping uh, feedback loop here. So what we're gonna do is with the gate selected, hit Command G for group. And so we make a little tiny audio effect rack inside of this larger one. And so in our smaller one, we just wanna create a chain and call this one dry and call this one teleported. And so now if I play a note, it's gonna play forever because we have a feedback loop, but we have nothing to make the signal quieter. And so how can we fix that? Well, in, in the gate, we have a gain knob here. And so I can map that to, uh, I'm gonna map it to macro four and call this one, rename it to feedback. Uh, macro three, I wanna use as effect send. Um, and so how can we do that? Well, what we wanna do is to be able to control the volume of the signal coming into the delay in the first place. And so the way that I'll do that is just by putting a utility device in front of this little audio effect rack, and that'll just give me an easy way to map this macro three to uh, effectively effect send. Um, so look for utility and put that here and map its gain to macro three, and this one's called effects send. And so now uh, let's listen to what we've got. So we've got a feedback that we can control here. We could make it go crazy. Okay, so we got a lot of capabilities here. There's a lot of ways to shoot ourselves in the foot, but you know, life is dangerous. We've got an effect send, so even, let's say, with a high feedback, we could have a low send. Okay, so we've got the basic controls all set, dry volume, wet volume, effect send, and feedback knobs. The last thing to do is just to kind of spice it up. So let's do that. So I'm just going to collapse these, these devices that are just giving us our basic capabilities here. And so maybe uh, the first thing we could do is maybe instead of going in note synchronization mode, let's go uh, milliseconds mode on the, on the delay time. And so we'll just call this delay time. Oh, maybe we want to use a special filter in there, for instance. And so uh, maybe you've got uh, maybe you've got a uh, you know a cool filter like volcano. So let's put that in here. Uh, maybe we want a band pass, um, and let's make it pretty dark. And maybe you want to add some drive. You know, uh, I don't think you can do that in Valhalla Delay. Ooh, or that. Down boy. Uh, or maybe, uh, you know, let's say uh, instead of a bandpass filter, let's, uh, let's put it through a, a cool chorus effect. Everyone's favorite, right? Whoa. So you put a chorus in your delay line.
That's fun with the chorus. Um, what else can we do? Oh, how about a phaser? Right, right, of course. Okay, that's fun. So let's save it and uh, give it a name. Let's call it uh, our uh, delay buddy. Buddy. Delay buddy. So anytime you need a buddy and it's a delay, then call the delay buddy. So that's it for our tutorial. I hope that was useful for you. Maybe you learned a technique or two about moving audio around inside of Ableton Live. And uh, hopefully now you've got a device that you can recall and customize the next time you need a, a very special delay line uh, to make exactly how you want it to be. So take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.